But unfortunately, those who don't know, or perhaps are even enemies to Islam, are misquoting and misusing verses from the Quran, teachings from Muhammad, peace be upon him, and particular incidences which were used to show something very, very beautiful in Islam. We talked about in a previous program how to break down the word Islam. And the word Islam deals with something all about peace, tranquility, submission to God, obedience to God, actually wanting God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is straight out of the Bible. Also, another thing that we talked about when we were talking about this subject of what is Islam, we realized that Everything in Islam, we're having the truth for it. We have to speak the truth. We have the proof. The evidences are all there. And in reality, it's the people who are presenting these stories, if you will, or accusations, who are either exaggerating, misrepresenting, and in some cases, they're outright lying about what Islam teaches. Here's a point for us to consider. If somebody's lying, if they're not telling the truth, and we are telling the truth, and we can prove it, this will have a bigger impact on an audience than all the debates you can have in the world. Because a liar is automatically kicked out of society. Nobody wants to hang around with a liar. Regardless of his other credentials, the fact that he's a liar speaks louder than anything else. So it's imperative that Muslims must do two things. Number one, don't open your mouth unless you're going to speak the truth. And number two, learn the subject so that you don't misrepresent it too. And if you don't know, say, I don't know. Now specifically, we were talking on the subject of what they say is a violent verse in the Quran talking about killing people. We want to keep in mind that the Quran never, ever contradicts itself. Never. So if there's a verse in the Quran telling us to go out and take innocent lives, then how are we going to deal with another verse in the Quran which says the opposite? In Surah al maidah chapter 5 of the Quran, if you go by the numbers like I do, I think it's in verse 34. You can look it up and find it for yourself. It's telling here real clear that whoever takes an innocent life it's as though they killed all of humanity. This is not a joke. This is very serious. And then it says, whoever saves a life, it's as though they saved all of humanity. Now, how could you take this verse, which is a clear verse of the Quran, and then say that it also says that you can take innocent lives? It doesn't work. If such a contradiction really existed, I promise you, the enemies of Islam would have been all over this one, even at the time of Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And naturally, that's not true. Let me give you another little example. When it talks about kital, and that was the word that we spoke about in another program, kital is a word that is difficult to translate to English. Some of the previous translators have used such words as kill, which is not totally wrong, Slaughter, which is definitely wrong, and words along that order. But in reality, if you know the verse in context, and you study the Maurid, the Arabic dictionary, a little closer, you'll find that this word and the meaning behind it is a lot more in line with the word we use today all the time, combat. To deal in kital is to deal in a form of killing that is only in combat, and it has big rules and restrictions that go with it. Now, if the President of the United States, as an example, orders troops to go out to defend truth, justice, peace in the various places where the United States sends their troops, they call it combat. They call it military combat. Now, there's another phrase in the, uh, in the English called mortal combat. Mortal combat deals with meaning to kill. Mortal means to kill. So if it's necessary to kill in combat, 
This is okay according to the Geneva Convention. Also, it's okay according to the United States. And it's also okay according to Islam. But Islam is having more restrictions and more rules about this kital or combat than the United States does. And it has more rules about it than even the Geneva Convention. Let me explain what I'm talking about. For instance, when the verse comes in the Quran, it's ordering the Muslims to engage in combat those who are already engaging in combat with them. Ordering them, turn them out from where they turned you out. Who is it talking about? It's talking about people that had killed Muslims before, abused them horribly, kicked them out of their own land, out of their own homes, stole their property, even took their women. They did a lot of bad things. Now, after 13 years, comes this verse saying, go back now and reclaim what's rightfully yours. If you have to engage in combat, you do so. But watch this. In the same verse, not a separate verse, same verse, it says, but if they cease, if they stop, if they are no longer engaging in this mortal combat, you have to stop too. Because then, if you didn't, you would be a transgressor and verily, Allah does not love the transgressors. Now, that's as clear as you can get. If they stop, you have to stop. There are other limitations that go along with this kital or type of combat. One of them is that when you engage in this kind of combat, it is not permissible to kill or even hurt anybody other than those who are actually attacking you. So innocent lives must be preserved according to the Quran and the Sunnah. In other words, the Sharia or Islamic law. The innocent children, of course, the women, the elders, the religious people, all of these people are to be spared. And even the animals and even the plant life, even the infrastructures are not to be damaged because this is the ruling in Islamic law. Now, somebody might come along and say, yo, but now, wait a minute. We know about a hadith. And it's funny, you know what? That the people who don't want to believe in Islam, yet they study it to try to find something wrong with it. There are many hadith. They number in the hundreds of thousands. Okay, Hadith means a story or a teaching in Islam. They find one, and then they find a way to take a part of it out of that and say, this is all we want to mention. That's just this part right here. Where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ordered some of his companions to go out and to kill certain people. And he uses this word to kill them. And they did kill them. And it was really bad. But what they leave out is the fact that these people were worse than the worst of the terrorists that we have today. The people had come to them, pretended they wanted to be Muslims, pretended they wanted to be a part of the community, and they began to accept the things that go along with the social community of Islam. They were taking the benefits. Then they went out and slaughtered innocent Muslims and killed teachers and memorizers of the Quran. <laughs>